I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is our 2020 NPC Teen National Overall Champion, Tom Picaro. He barely turned 18 and won this show. Welcome to the show. Pleasure to be here, Dave. You're, you are a young, first of all, congratulations on the big win, but you are a young, young Teen National Champion. Yeah. Oh, I mean... Total training age, I might be more in line with some of the older competitors over the years, but total age, yeah. Um, honestly, it's more around the time when Cody Montgomery started yeah. hitting up the teen nationals too. I mean, if the show had gone off the right the, the, the time it should have been in July, you would have been 17, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I turned 18 in August, early August. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. I mean, so, overall goal is, I mean, maybe, let's say the next two years go perfectly then I'm going to try to tie Cody's record. Three wins at the Teen Nationals. I got to tell you, I never thought that record would be beaten. And it's still, obviously, you got two more years to go. But, but, and you never know who can show up. But, I mean, you have a very good shot at doing it. I mean, you got a great physique right off the bat, I mean, to begin with. And, uh, you know, it, it's exciting to see new guys coming up. How, you know, I guess a lot of people want to know, how did you get involved in bodybuilding and develop a physique the way you did at such a young age already? All right, well... Ever since I was really little, I mean, you know, everyone who's into bodybuilding, they've got something in them where it, it's part of them, right? So I've always been into lifting and trying to be big and strong, and I was always a strong kid. Um, but, you know, things happen when you're younger, and I got pretty overweight. And around the age of 12, I was 205 pounds. We, brought, we lost him for a second. Well, what he's going to tell you is that he was obese, you know, uh, when he was a young kid. And it, there's a good story to go along with that. Hopefully we can get him back here. Um, and uh, after that, you know what, Paul, to uh, Tom, you froze for a second. So just start again. Um, at 12, you were obese. Um, ex right. Explain to people, you know, kind of what, what happened, why you got obese. Uh, okay. So I was uh, athletic as a child, but had some really severe head trauma. Uh, concussions bad enough where I was staying overnight and uh, chop specialized head trauma units taking and, me out of school. On, you you can't just throw that out there. Like what would give me an example of like of, of how you get head trauma because when I was a kid and I told you this off camera I would run into like air conditioning units and cut my head open I got to go get stitches but I wasn't staying in the hospital in a concussion unit. What, what, okay. what were you what happened to you? All right well here's I'll, t I'll tell you the big one like the really bad yeah. one yeah was during a bike race going really fast downhill. I don't remember this exactly, so this is, I don't remember it at all actually, so this is all a second-hand account. Apparently I was racing down a hill Oof. and something happened, I guess my pant got caught up in the chain, oh. but flipped right over the handlebars, face planting Oof. into the asphalt. Oh. And they, the doctor said if I wasn't wearing a helmet, I would literally be dead. Wow. Because like the, the helmet got scratched and torn all along the side of my face. Wow. Yeah. Did you get did you get road rash on your face? No, no, no. Uh, so my my skull right here hit the bike, and then my head grinded along the asphalt on the bike helmet. Oh, so if that wasn't there, then that would have all peeled out. Right. Yeah, you would have scalped yourself like a, like an Indian uh, scalping a, <laughs> a cowboy back in the day. Yeah, yeah, and that was in first grade. So that in took first me out grade. Of so you first grade. So you what yeah. you woke up in the hospital? Yeah. Wow. Like uh, riding my bike and then woke up in the hospital getting stitches. And, and, and don't remember, crazy. you don't remember anything that happened. Wow. Nothing. Nothing. Your parents yeah, must yeah. have been horrified because, you know, a young little kid, you know, so you had to be, what, <laughs> seven years old? Yeah. So eight years old, I think, maybe. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. My dad said mom turned green. Like, oh. physically and, so, and, and then it happened how many more times where you had these, like, accidents like this? 
Uh, two more times, which were bad ones. The the other funny one that's bad. Uh, have you ever heard of like uh, we were playing a, a game in gym class, and running dive for a base, but jump too far and fly headfirst into one of those metal door jams. Oh <laughs> man! So full force sprint. Oh, flying head impact. You know, <laughs> you knocked yourself out. Yeah, knocked himself out. How how many stitches did that require? Those were staples this time. Medicine had advanced. Oh fact. wow! So you were an expert. So did the ambulance come and have to take you to the hospital? Yep. yep. Oh my god! I, at this point, are you like embarrassed by like all these like things that are happening to you, or you don't even care? You're like you know a kid. Oh, I don't care. I think it it kind of it definitely helped with bodybuilding later on though. Yeah. It like it set me back social development wise, but it also <laughs> helped me learn how to function on my own. Right. So what happens now? They, they, they told you, you you can't work out, right? Or something like that? Yeah, I, I can't work out. I, I can't move. I wasn't even allowed to watch. Like, this was after movies. the third one? After the first one, they said this. Oh. But the, the second and the third one each happened within a year of each other. So it was like three years oh. straight. Nothing. Right. No. Did you, did they have any, I mean, I'm sure they did like CAT scans on you. Did they have, was there any damage or anything like that? Um, nothing that they could tell at that time. Right. Um, Did you notice anything different behaviorally in your in, in the way you were acting or anything? Um, well, you know, I was getting really emotional all of a sudden for no reason. Mm -hmm. Getting headaches from almost anything. Bright lights. Right. People talking. I had to put in isolation rooms all the time. Oh, really? Oh, so it was um, really bad then. Terrible. Like, I, there's a reason I was out of school for so long. And how many How many months of school did you miss total? Um, total? Well, for the first one, I missed the last uh, last five months of school. Oh, wow. The second one, I missed like three and a half right in the middle of the year. And then I missed a, a month from the last one. That's crazy. And, and, and so you got fat because you couldn't do anything, right? <laughs> really fat. I mean, think about not a muscled kid being 5'4 and 205 pounds. Oh, my God. So that, now you probably don't even want to go out in public at that point, right? Because you're probably mortified, <laughs> right? Right, because I had gone from kid with abs, strong, always looked up to for that, right. to crazy fat. I didn't even want to try again, oh. you know. But then at a point, it just became too much. And I was yeah. like, cut the crap. I watched Pumping Iron and was like, no, I want to be lean. Right, right. <laughs> so you sit, you start working out against medical orders or whatever, you know, you want to say. <laughs> right. Start working out, do what is obviously, I now know, a really horrible crash diet. I mean, having four Quest bars a day. That was your whole, that was the whole diet? That was the whole diet. Four Quest bars and maybe a chicken breast or two here and there. Wow. So you're very disciplined, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't until think. This, uh, until this week after the show, after Nationals, I hadn't taken a single week off from training, like ever. If I took one rest day, I'd add another day on to the next cycle of training. So I hadn't missed anything. And. <laughs> I couldn't let myself, even like if it was like a cheat day, right. like Christmas or something, I couldn't bring myself to go past my calories or not hit my protein. I'd, I'd have to get there somehow. Right. Well, you know, I can understand being obese sometimes that could, you know, create that in your head. I know Evan Santapani was like that too. He didn't ever wanted to be fat again. He was always worried about getting, you know, gaining weight back. Now, you obviously um, competed at a body weight of what at the Teen Nats? Um, I weighed in at 200.6. Okay. Now, when I saw you today, I, I said, I, you <laughs> definitely, you must have gained a lot of weight back because I can see it in your face. What you, what'd you say you gained, 40 pounds? Uh, 45. Now, is that uh, making you nervous? Are you nervous because of all that weight gain? Because I know, you know, we were just talking about how you were, you know, you were afraid you were going to get fat and everything like that. You know, um, I was only nervous after the first week <laughs> of the show because in the first week past the show, I gained 30 pounds. Oh wow! In the one week, that's just water weight. Yeah, yeah, that's water. Weight. I, I know, but but still, you know, you see your your lines go away. Oh yeah, but I, you know, you come back to the gym and you're so much stronger. I knew I was going to catch the rebound wave right. and build at least a good amount of muscle from sure, that. sure. So I wasn't. I mean, I guess uh, finally accomplishing something noteworthy in the sport kind of reset my mind that I'm not always in panic mode. Now, have you been going to school regularly ever since, you know, all these concussion events happened and we're over with? 
Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Back to school regularly. Gotcha. And after about seventh grade, uh, back to the top of the classes where I was before. Yeah, you were just we were talking about that off camera. I was pretty impressed. You said you're you're a straight A student. Yeah, straight A student. Uh, like awesome. all AP classes, that whole sort of right. He, and he's still in high school, guys. He's got one more year left, and uh, the the goal is to go to U Penn, right? I mean, you're a Philly guy, so I, I know that area pretty well. Went to school around there, and you want to go to the University of Pennsylvania, which is an Ivy League school, which would be phenomenal if you can get into it. What what is your area of uh, that you want to study? Well, I want to go into biology or or molecular biology, and try to take that into med school, cool. and try to go endocrinology from that. Yeah. That that's that's a, sounds good. You should get into concussions and uh, <laughs> concussion concussive medicine. You, you have a lot of experience in that. <laughs> well, that's true, but there's just so many things in endocrinology that I think could be improved a little bit here. There. Yeah, I, I agree. Look, you know what? I should have. That's what I should have done. I should I should have been an endocrinologist when I went to med school. That that's where I should have really focused all my attention on because I really like that too. Now you told me also at some point you're. I don't know if anyone's going to believe this, but I, I believe you. There's no reason for you to lie. You know, you actually went for blood work because sometimes when you have concussive events, it can affect your pituitary gland and, and production of hormones. First of all, what made you go get checked? Because you, you obviously must something not, must have felt a little off in your body. Right. Well, eight months ago, I had a car crash. Yeah, I, uh, I drove. Don't tell me out. you hit your head during the car crash. Of course, oh, I, I tore the car. <laughs> You're poor. I, you know, I feel I don't even. I'm not even sympathetic. I feel bad for your mom. I, not even for you because you almost enjoy it. I think. <laughs> I feel so bad. If your mom gets one more phone call that you hit your head again, she's gonna have a nervous breakdown. My God, yeah. Because the, the last time I had a big concussion, the doctor said I'd be a vegetable. My so my I, son, yeah. true true story. My son jumped off the couch when he was like, I don't even know how. He he, he had no like you know safety mechanism. He just. He just dove off head first, and his head blew up like this. We we were like crying. My wife and I we were going to the emergency room. We were so worried about him. That's not you. You do that. You were doing this like every six months. You were doing the same thing, you know. But but your son only weighs like 30, 40 pounds. <laughs> yeah, he bounced off the ground. He's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like he he just bounces off the yeah. floor. <laughs> <laughs> he only weighed like twenty pounds probably when he did it. Yeah. 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 It's a little bit. Yeah, it's a it's a little oh, bit. Your poor mother. Oh my god, I got to get her on the phone. We got to lock. We got to lock you down. Something like that. So you get in this car accident. So what happens after that? So after that, uh, I notice my recovery from training goes way in the tubes, and I start having a lot of trouble sleeping. So I uh, I begin to work with some endocrinologists at UPenn, and um, they don't really know what's going on until I start saying that. Now there are some things with sexual issues too. So that's when they ordered the blood tests. Right. When you say um, sexual issues, what, you had no sex drive? Just none. Okay. None at all. Like it went from normal teenager to nothing. Right. So they ordered the blood test. The earliest I could get it in was a week before the show. Oh, wow. And so because of my history of concussions, they went everything. Uh, LH, FSH. They even tested the IGF-1. I tested my GH, um, total, and free testosterone. Well, I made sure they did uh, the sensitive assays. I, I don't like the, like, you know how the standard assay, the ECLIA, mm -hmm. it can be really, yeah, really inaccurate. Yeah. Like, if I'm off, I want to know I'm off. Mm -hmm. So I made them get the high sensitivity testing. Okay. And where'd you come back? I came in. And um, so I'll talk about LH and FSH first because that's, should tell you more about so you didn't hold on, you didn't probably get the results till after the show right i would assume no, i got the thank results. god you didn't thank god you just can tell what, what, what Actually, were the results i got the results an hour after i stepped off stage and what were they okay um total testosterone was three nanograms per deciliter now you're not making this up this is this is no uh, lie because literally I mean, three normal ma normal male is 250 to 850 you were three which is probably right. lower than a woman right it, that's actually, I, I was looking into it. It's That's one-fifth of the bottom of the reference range for women. That's crazy. So, at like, literally nothing. What was your um, estrogen level? Did you have any estrogen? Probably not, because... They didn't check estrogen oh. because I wasn't having any guy now. Oh. Uh, you know, I wonder why. Yeah, because you know, <laughs> if you have no testosterone, you really can't convert anything into estrogen. <laughs> right, right. Uh, which is probably why I couldn't sleep either. Right, you know? right. But then FSH was unreadably low. Like, the test actually came back and said... So you have pituitary, you have some kind of pituitary issue yeah, going on, right? The good news though is that the IGF one was 
over the reference range. So that's probably what pulled me through in the contest. Okay, so your your body was cranking out GH essentially, which raises uh, IGF one, and then, but your your testicular axis was like kind of shut down. And so, do you think? Do they? I would just look. Given the fact that you have muscle, I would assume that it probably happened after the car crash, not prior to that, right? Yeah, yeah, it happened after. Wait, from the car. I mean, it probably happened from the car crash. I would assume, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had blood tests before because I get you know, twice yearly blood work, and it wow. always came back normal. So oh, so you've had them tested before? Okay, so this is this is new then. Yeah. So you basically essentially prepared for this show on nothing. Nothing at all. Like not only not uh, using anything special. But nothing. So you aren't. So you are no anabolics or anything like that. No, no. Well, if, if you were, they would obviously wouldn't have a testosterone of three. So um, <laughs> it's a I no. But it's a miracle. It's a miracle that you actually looked as good as you did, which means you obviously had some muscle for, before that, and you probably just tortured the crap out of yourself. H how much cardio were <laughs> you doing for the show? Uh, I was doing uh, half an hour cardio twice a day, so fasted that's, in the morning. That's not a lot. So you, were you no. eating low no. calories, low carbs? No, but uh, I've been training twice a day for the past three years, like twice a day weight training. Okay, so um, you were burning a lot of I, calories, yeah. Yeah, um, I actually cruised into the show at 320 grams of carbs. Wow. Never went below 300, so. That's I pretty was, good. How long were yeah. your workouts that you were doing twice a day? Um, about an hour in, a mor in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. Wow, now, how do you do that when you go to school? Do you get do it at your house or something? Yeah, I uh, have a really, really good setup in my house. So, you know, coronavirus didn't really impact my training all okay. that much. I might not have the fun workout where you go to the local gym and yeah. slam around some heavy dumbbells. Um, but as far as schedule goes, you're saying, how do I fit that in with school? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So every day I, uh, I wake up at 4 a.m. Wow. And then get my, half my first meal in and then wake train. <laughs> eat again and go to school. Uh, and then I, I couldn't drag my ass out of bed in the morning to go to high school. I was like the last like the last <laughs> absolute minute and you're getting up four in the morning. What time you go to bed at night? Seven. Oh, well there you go. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I, yeah, do you, oh, well, you don't, this, I guess you're not doing sports after school anymore with the social with COVID. So you come home, do your homework and go to sleep basically. No, actually I come Oh, you gotta home. work out. Right, you come home and work, work out. Work out again, that's right, okay. yeah. Gotcha. So right when you come home, that's training number two. Uh -huh. Then you eat and do your homework and eat and go to bed. You know. I got to tell you, I'm pretty impressed for a teenager to be that disciplined because most guys want to go out or hang out or you know watch TV, movies. You're to, to go to bed at seven o'clock and wake up at four in the morning is very impressive at your age. You're way mature beyond your years. I don't think that many guys your age could do that. Well, thank you, but yeah. I, I think I can't. I have to attribute some of it to those concussions and kind of being disillusioned with common culture uh -huh. and wanting to do something good with like right. great with your life sort of right. thing. And then also I have a great support structure around me between my coach and my family and the kids that drag themselves in the morning to come and train with me too. Oh, that's awesome. And so who's training with during, you? Do you have friends training with you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, good during to see. Prep, that's awesome. Kids would train with me in the morning. Wow. You know how prep is. Prep is awful. I'm shocked that you got a bunch of kids doing this. I'm I'm so I'm so uh, excited that, that people actually are motivated these days. I, I just I'm so into, I see such a lazy culture out there, and here you got these yeah. guys that are getting up early, meeting you at your house to train and, and pushing you through the workout. That that's awesome. That's a that's a actually, great little have, support uh, system. Three of the kids that train with me are competing at a powerlifting meet in two weeks. Awesome. Very and, cool. Uh, one of them is set up to break the state record for his weight class. Wow, so you guys have a little uh, a little network of, uh, it's like the Philly the Philly Mecca over there that you're, you're, you're kind of nurturing. It's like <laughs> the the least LA fitness gym you could ever imagine. That's great, There's that's so awesome. much blood on the floor. <laughs> yeah, you, you, gotta, you gotta, just don't hit your head in the, in the gym, that's all, don't, no concussions in your home gym, please. <laughs> right, right, that's why it's padded all over the place. I love it, so you got, all right, we got, so we got two more years possibly of Tom Picaro winning the NPC Team Nationals, or at least be, be, you'll be at that show for another two years, assuming you don't, you know, hit your head or anything like that before that, which <laughs> we, we're not gonna jinx you, we're done. We know, you know what, at some point, I, I can give this because I was a wild kid and I used to always bang my head and get stitches all the time. I said to myself after the last one I did, I had hit my head on an air cushioning unit running through someone's backyard, cutting through the yard to get to my house before some other kid, you know, we were racing. I said, I'm never 
going to the hospital with stitches again. I'm not hitting my head. I'm done. That's it. I had it. I'm slowing down. I'm going to pay more attention to what I do. And, and it was true. From that point on, I never got, uh, I never hit my head again. Aside from, aside from my, in my house where my kids throw shit at me. But true, <laughs> truth be told, I kind of like put my foot down and said, I'm going to pay more attention. And so hopefully you're done That's too. That's impressive. I was expecting you to say like, and then a month later. I no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I, it was years until I, until, until anything happened to me at all. But, uh, but you know, it, 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 it is, it's, sometimes you go through a stage where it's like, you just don't pay attention or just things just, you know, you're just a little wa- more wild than you probably need to be. And, uh, you know. and what seven-year-old isn't wild? Yeah. Did, you car- did your parents want to take away the car when you got into the car accident? No, um, because it wasn't my fault. Oh, like, okay. It was so not my fault that insurance even covered the deductible. Oh, that's good. All right. Well, now, you want to, why don't you give your coach a little plug since you've been with him for six years, which is pretty impressive. Oh, yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, Alan Andrews, uh, Big Al. Yep. Uh, he's an old, uh, uh, one of the old bodybuilders from, I think, a little bit before your era. Yeah, yeah. A, little, a little before me, I think, yeah. A little before you, yeah. He uh, was training a lot with, uh, some of your viewers might know, Marty Vranikar. Oh, yeah, sure. Marty's a great guy. Yeah. yeah. Mar- Mar- yeah. Marty went. Marty was a great, great bodybuilder back in the 80s, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, I-, I saw him at the Masters Nationals and he- when he won his pro card. Yeah. To- he actually uh, helped prep me for the show too. Oh, he did. Yeah, he's a good guy. He, yeah. He's got a great physique too. So oh, you're yeah. you're in good hands over there, that's for sure. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, they uh, definitely keep me grounded. Uh, <laughs> Big Al, especially. All right. Well, you know what? I want to just give you a big congratulations on the uh, Teen National Overall sh- Championship, and of course. You know, unfortunately, I think because of COVID, you know, in that past years, all the teen national champs used to go out to get flown out to Venice and they did photo shoots. You know, the times have changed. So hopefully this interview will put your name out there and let people know your story because it's a good story. And uh, we want to make sure that we keep you nice and safe. Maybe you should wear your, maybe you should, maybe you should get one of those helmets. You know, like the helmet kids wear. You should always have a helmet on just in case, you know. You know, if anyone looks at my Instagram, they'll always see me wearing this Superman hat. Oh, you do? Okay. Well, Maybe it's I think you need a helmet, like like a reinforced, like like uh, like <laughs> like almost like an Iron Man like helmet type of thing. So in case you get you know hit or thrown, or you got protection on at all times. You can make it like oh. a superhero like costume. That could be your your little <laughs> shtick, you know. Yeah, that's how everyone knows you own the gym. You know, got the Iron Man helmet on. <laughs> You gotta have your own. Your own. You gotta make up your own superhero, though. Like uh, character. I feel like though. Kai Green a little bit. You know how he always has those masks on. Yeah, I'm saying you. You should incorporate it into your whole like uh, get up. You know, there you go. And then and then it's uh you got it. It's still, it serves as dual like marketing slash protection for your head because we can't afford to, for you to take another blow to the head. You know, it's not and very they dangerous. Like t-shirts with the helmet on it. There you go. You can, we just gave you a great marketing idea. <laughs> you got you to you gotta take the teen national title and you got to do something with it, right? You got to make money and just, uh, it's all about uh, marketing yourself. Yeah. What's yeah. your Instagram if people want to, you know, contact you? All right. Um, you can look up my name, Tom Pacaro. It'll be T-O-M-P-A-C-A-R-O. Uh, you know, don't slander my form too much on the lifting videos. I, okay. uh, I go heavy. So it's it's not the prettiest form. <laughs> <laughs> we, put, we put the Instagram up there too as well so people can see that. And uh, once again... Great. Best of luck. Keep us updated and uh, best of luck in 2021. All right. Thanks, Dave. Uh, I hope to see your channel keep growing Thank and you. keep pumping out those interviews with the with the current competitors. Uh, I know a lot of the guys out there that are competing right now love to see the competitors talk right before they go on stage because cool. they're going through the same things. We're going to be, we have a whole Olympia series. We're going to, as soon as I hang up with you, I'm going to have Dan Solomon on. Then we got a bunch of competitors. So uh, it's going to be a, a big month for us. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy all the coverage. But for now, we are out of time. I'm Dave Palumbo with Tom Picaro, our team national champion, 2020. We'll see you next time.